And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and I review a lot of games. And not every game that I play I like. There's a lot of games I don't like. I try to get full reviews of many, many games, but I don't always get them all in for whatever reason. So every once in a while, I do one of these videos where I talk about a bunch of games that I didn't like for various reasons. Maybe it's just not my style. Maybe it's just horrifically bad couple of those today and I didn't want to do the whole full review other people have reviewed these games you can go check that out but these give you my quick thoughts on them so I'm going to talk about those today and I'm going to be going from the ones I don't like to the ones I absolutely hate in here so we got seven of them so let's get started first we have clinic now clinic is one of these games one of the two games here that I'm putting in a dice tower library because just even though it's not my jam I know a lot of people who really do like this. This is a heavier Euro style game along the lines of a Vitell, a Serta style game. And in this one, it's a, it's a game in which you are running a clinic, a doctor's clinic, and patients are coming in and you are moving the patients around and building up a three-dimensional building of sorts as you put these different buildings in place. Um, the patients come in, you heal the patients, you get some money, and you slowly build up and get the most points at the end of the game. I felt like this game was, first of all, one of the problems with Clinic was that it was, I thought, I felt like it was overly complex for the sake of complexity. It, the game is not an easy one to grok. So that was one problem I had with it. Another problem is there's some weird thematic stuff. In this game, you very much let people get sicker to heal them and get more points. That just does not seem like the Hippocratic Oath covers that. Thirdly, there's a humongous emphasis here on parking. You have all these cars and things that you're parking around and patients bring in cars and the doctors have cars and then you can have a patient leave and take the doctor's car. There's just some odd things. And I felt like I was dealing with parking a lot more than I wanted to in a game about a clinic. Um, but despite all that, the game does work. But at the end of it, I just felt like I had worked rather than had fun playing a board game. And I felt like the payoffs and the money was really hard to get to and it was just so much and it just felt like I was struggling the whole game just to survive and also the 3D aspect I found to be eh, okay but like I said going in the library well we're missing a piece we got to replace that piece but other than that a pretty solid game uh, for many people just not for me clinic Next, we have Quirky Circuits. This is the other game that's going in the library. This one is just a me thing, because if you go look in the Dice Tower, you'll see that many other people really enjoy this. Jason Levine loved it. Eric Summer thought it was fantastic. What Quirky Circuits is, essentially, is a Robo Rally mixed with the mind. And for some reason, I hate that combo. But I can see that the game is, is, is a fine game. I just don't like it. Um, because what you're doing is you have a singular robot and you are trying to get this robot to complete tasks by everyone playing cards and programming that robot together without communicating. Then you flip them over and see what happens. And you know, I love Robo Rally. I love the chaos. I love people messing up. The mind, I don't mind. <laughs> I don't mind that game because it's so quick and simple. Quirky is not so quick and simple. And I just found that when I play with other people, I found myself getting frustrated too much in this game. Great components. Plat Hat does a fantastic job. Lots of people like it. I'm putting it in the library. Just not for me. All right. Those are the ones going in the library. Now we get down to ones that, that are not. I just don't think they're that good of games. First, we have Nemo Rising. So Nemo Rising from WizKids unfortunately follows the traditional WizKid output these days of games that are just not high quality component wise. It is a cooperative game and you are following the adventures of Captain Nemo and his crew or whatever. One to four players and you're Captain Nemo, Sarah Duncan, Adam Fulmer or Ulysses S. Grant. Okay, fine. And you're playing two different scenarios. So that's kind of neat that there's two different scenarios. They play pretty much exactly the same, which is less neat. And you're just moving around, opening up rooms, uh, taking cards, using icons to defeat challenges. And this game just falls apart because it's boring. It really is. I wouldn't say it's overly hard. 
it's not overly easy, so there's that going for it. But you just go around, you run into challenges, there's these monsters that move around and it's fiddly because every turn you move these monsters and they just keep going in circles and then they'll switch directions, go the other way, then they go this way and it's blah. You open up random rooms, you draft cards, you roll dice. I just found that this game overall just left me with a very mad feeling, Nemo Rising. Until Daylight. Well, it didn't have me because it was a zombie theme and there's a lot of those, but man, the artwork in this game is fantastic. This is another cooperative game. It's a survival game in a world where you're just these monsters. I guess they're not necessarily zombies. They might as well be. Uh, these monsters are coming and they're gonna attack you and you gotta find stuff. Way too much luck and way it just wasn't interesting. You're just flipping cards and kind of seeing what happens and there's a little bit of back and forth, but it's a really nice production. It just doesn't come together to be a game that interests me much at all. I was really jazzed about this one, but we found with high luck swings, you were looking for sometimes specific things and you don't find them. It just, there's so many zombie games out there. This one did not stand out. Crisis at Steamfall. If you're wondering if I played this one enough, the answer to that's gonna be no. The rule book for this one is hideous. The thing about it is the game itself sounds fascinating. You have um, a bunch of, this is a player board, and you're gonna pick one of these actions and you get everything in that column. And as the game goes by, you can add to these columns. Well, that's really cool. I love that idea. I also love that you have, you know, this track and depending on where it moves, you get various actions. But then you play the game itself and we have two major problems. One is the game itself isn't that interesting. You just go around, do this, go here, get points. But this is hands down in the top 10 possibly worst rule books I've ever read. I went to here, I looked online. I mean, it doesn't look like it's a bad rule book, but oh my word, I don't even, it took me forever to figure out how do you even win this game? Blah, 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 blah. Did not like this one. Steamfall, Christ at Steamfall. And you say, Tom, you didn't play it right. Probably not. All right. Now we have Mountaineers. Now this one, I was already suspicious of because of the size of the box. This long box here doesn't bode well for a game with great, you know, great things. That's because this game has a 3D mountain that you're climbing. Now that's pretty cool. Let me see if I can pull out a side of it here for you. Ooh, and you build a 3D mountain, great. One problem with this game though, the production values are pretty bad. The mountain falls over easily. There are these little player boards you build that are actually cut wrong, and we had to put them together. They're, the cards don't look good, the pegs fall out, and in fact, you need to put the pegs in this game. There's these little pegs that you come in that you're putting in the side of the mountain, and you're doing so in numerical order, which means every game you need to sort them out, because how are you supposed to keep them in numerical order? It's really weird. The game itself is, you need to, you draw cards, at the beginning of the game, and you need to make these paths on the mountain. You make specific paths, you get points. Okay, so this says put 12 in a row here and you get some points, or you know, cross four rivers to get points. Okay, that's fine. So the rest of the game, you are using actions, getting supplies, spending those supplies to take actions. That's interesting, although really, the theming of it's weird. It feels more like Tron than it does like climbing a mountain. So they bring in these event cards, and that completely destroys the game for me. I mean, I'm like, oh, so I'm gonna be climbing up this rock thing. I turn a card, can't climb and rock this turn. Oh, okay. Now these event cards, when you get them, then you can use them or save them to the end of the game where you might get a point or two from them. And it, the whole thing just feels like it's really undercooked and underdeveloped. Add that to really bad production values. And I know this game was made by people who climb mountains, but if this is what climbing a mountain is like, then this game is not selling me on it. Uh, I felt like it, there's some interesting things going on in this game, but not enough. Um, yeah, the less said about that, I guess the better. Uh, I was just not very impressed with this one as a game. And the last game is a game I just loathe, but it has the nicest production of every game here. And that's the Island of El Dorado. And this is actually the, the beautiful Legend Edition. So don't get on my case about playing this properly, you know, or, or, or being about the components. Although I will say that even though this has some nice components, it uses a lot of public domain artwork, and I just don't like that. 
I think it's incongruous. And, you know, we have all these tiles with these pretty pictures on them. And then I look at the tiles and I say, wait a minute, these tiles look very samey. Oh, they are all the same. And you put this weird public domain artwork on them. I didn't like that. The wooden pieces and everything else in it, it's fine. So what is this game? You're moving around. And by the way, another very bad rule book. This game also has competitive, cooperative, fighting monsters. There's solo adventures. It's a mix. I've heard the co-op game's better. I went through the rules, walked through a little bit myself, and I said, I guess it's a little better. But this game is just sheer luck. Just sheer luck. It's like a roll and move game almost. Like you go and explore tiles and get these tiles and bad things happen to you and you're looking for these things and you go in this cave at the, at the end and you go down the cave and it's just luck what happens. Luck, 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 luck. So much luck that I was infuriated after playing it. I was like this, I can't believe something like this did so well on Kickstarter and people are talking about this like it's great and I play it and I'm like this feels like a game from the 70s with much nicer production, although the art is from the 1800s. Yeah, this one just didn't work for me. I'm still very excited about this company's other games, and I know some people really like El Dorado, so again, this might just be me, but I found this one to be so much luck in a very, very expensive box. So here we go, that's seven thumbs down. If you feel differently, here's your chance. Tell everybody, because my opinion is obviously not the only one out there, and some people may love these games. That's what the comments are for. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. Have fun gaming.